Judge not is a phrase heard often when you're in a public ministry. I said phrase, I didn't say Bible verse. Because when you turn to Matthew chapter 7, verse 1, you will find a Bible verse that's misquoted. And this is one of them verses like the love of money. No, they don't say the love of money. They say money is the root to all evil. That's the same. And yet the scripture is the love of money. So Matthew 7, 1, judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And what measure you meet it shall be measured unto you measure to you again that's two verses and partial of those verses are quoted to you on the street now let's look at Luke chapter 6 Luke 6 37 and Satan has designed people who have these intelligent responses of what they don't even know what they're saying. And there are a few and not much. One of them, that's not what Jesus would do, and they've never read and studied the Bible. So Luke 6 37, we read, Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Oh, they love that one. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. So when somebody comes up to you, Judge not. You're in danger of God the Father. Because when you step up to somebody who's in a public ministry, judge not. You are judging me. So you're a hypocrite when you step up. Judge not. You just judge. And the Bible says in Matthew 7 and Luke chapter 6, you will be judged by the judging that you will do and have done. So if God will find you guilty, you say, judge not, you already have judged. So you tell me not to judge when you judge, and God will find you at fault. It's amazing. John chapter 7. And anybody who comes up to you say, judge not, I think there would be sure law for a Christian, abiding law, John 7, 24, that as a Christian, when somebody comes up to you and says, judge not, we should be able to have them present their driver's license and be able to put it in a shredder right in front of their face. Because if you're going to be a nonsense to come, judge not, don't you see a red light as stopping? Don't you see, supposedly, a yellow light for caution? Don't you see a green light for going? And yet, in my time of driving... And in recent few years, I've seen more people go through a red light. I've seen more people stopping and staying at a green light. And we have all stepped on the gas for a yellow. So if you're going to come up to me and tell me, judge not, I hope you can judge a red, yellow, and green light in an intersection. We judge all around. We come to a curve, we're going to cross the street. I hope you judge to the left, and I hope you judge to the right. Is it good to... See, you know what they want you to do is they want you to shut up about Jesus. I don't know how many years I've been in a public ministry, but these people come up to me. They think if they get in my face and they have this great reply to me, I'm going to pack it up, go home, and never going to do a public ministry again. Oh, man, never heard that before. You know, you think if you're going to get in my face, you're going to scare me away. Not so. So John 7, 24, we read, Judge not. I had a guy tell me, a Christian, you can't find judge not in the Bible. There's three places right there. So what that guy is trying to do is, judge not is in the Bible, so you don't say it. Now you go on the other side of the coin. You're going to say something's not in the scriptures when it is in the scriptures. Judge not. So they got that part according to appearance. Now that's a comma. 
And there are things we're going to look at in a moment that a Christian can judge things. I can look at someone and not judge that person. I can look at their conduct, their life, and what's going on around them and say, come up with an assumption. Do I deal with this person as a Christian or do I deal with this person as a lost person? And when you're involved in a public ministry, you've got to make that judgment. You've got to make that determination. Who am I talking to? But I haven't finished the first because it says, judge not, that's what the world loves, according to appearance. That miniskirt girl there might be saved. But judge righteous judgment. So again, you go throwing about judge not, there's a righteous judgment. And the man that is doing a public ministry from the King James Bible who is born again saved and going to the commission of Mark 16, going all the world to preach the gospel, he's got the proper judgment of God to deal with people, and he's probably done it for many years. And you're going to come up with no Bible, no reading, living in the flesh. You don't want to hear about Jesus. You don't want to have anything to do with the Bible. And you're going to go, I judge not. And you'll have the nerve that when God judges you, you're going to get upset. I think, and this is a personal opinion, but I think at the great white throne judgment, I think there are going to be plenty of people going to get mad at God for judging them. And they may even tell God, quote the Bible to him, judge not. And imagine him open up the page. Listen, I believe the judgment seat, at the great white throne judgment, I believe God is going to let man just say whatever he has to say. He gave Job that opportunity, and Job's like, uh-uh. I'm not going to open my mouth. There are lost people out there who dare to open up their mouth before God. So, I don't know. I mean, that's, that's my own thing. But let's look at Romans chapter 2, verse 3. It's in the Bible. So, what do I say? When people go, Judge not. That's not what God do, would do. That's not what Jesus would do. That's not the I tell you right, right off the bat and get them angry and say, You don't read your Bible. You're judging me. Yes. Because if you're going to make idiotic statements like that, and not you don't know the Bible. There are men preaching on the ship. Noah preached on the street. Or maybe on the ship that he was building, or the, or the stern, or the bow of the ship. But the Bible says he preached to the people. I don't think he built a building. Romans 2, 3 states, And thinkest thou that this old man that judges them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God. Don't go be preaching about sin, and you're doing that sin. That's what this, what it's saying. But don't come to a, a Bible Christian who loves the Lord and wants to do right according to the Scripture, and come up, you're not a Christian, you're not saved, or you are a worldly Christian, and you don't want the world to, to go after you, and you come up to them, judge not, because I want you to shut up because you're making me look bad, or I want you to shut up because I don't want to hear from God. You're going to be judged. And yes, there are people out there, and we're, we're talking about judging, there are Preachers out of the pulpit, there are men that, that teach the Bible, and they have a sinful life. Yes, granted. And they get up there and tell you, and tell you, and tell you, and judge you, and judge you. They'll be judged. As we saw in Matthew 7, 1, as we saw in Luke 30, 6, 37. As they pronounce in judgment to you, God's going to judge them. God's going to judge me as a sinner. What do I do? When I get quiet, peaceful moments, and I don't think there's going to be interruption, I say, God, I just had a recent thing, just as far as yesterday. I, I'm like, Lord, have I sinned? And as far as the events has happened, not what sin I think it was. You know, those thoughts you're thinking now, they're not good. Yeah, Lord, I know I'm sorry. I'm judging myself. So when I stand in the street corner, I'm preaching the gospel, pretty much I have looked to God and sought God and say, hey, God, how do you see me as judge? Am I in your courtroom standing before you guilty? Do I need to confess my sins? 
And anybody who goes into public ministry should be on that atmosphere. You are to be prayed up. You are to be clean. Because, how, uh, listen, as a newborn babe in Christ, I, w I used to go knocking on doors with a marble shirt. Until somebody came up to me and said, that's not very good Christian attire. I'm like, oh, okay. Now, that was good, proper judgment in the right way. He was telling me I was wrong, but he did it in the right way. And we got to help people. And we've got to help those that are lost to show them by judging that there is a hell. And we got to show Christians that there is a judgment seat of Christ. There are crowns to be earned. There is an inheritance to be sought. There is rewards to obtain. And so any man that takes part in the public ministry who say, you better be judged up yourself. We'll hopefully see that your sins better be judged by you before God James 4 11 James 4 11 speak not evil one of another brethren brethren save people he that speak his evil his brother and judges his brother, speaketh evil of the law, and judges the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. So, judging is a very thin line. We ought not to judge, but we're the judge. And when we judge, we're the judge by a standard set forth by the Bible. We are set forth a judgment, what the Bible says, and not what my personal opinion is. And I'm not even really to judge by the laws of the government that I live in, because those laws may contradict the Bible. But yet, if there are laws, I, I let's make it real simple. As simple as I can. I just saw someone shoot another person on a sidewalk. Judge not least should be judged. No, I've got to call the police department. I've got to call 911. I can't walk away from that. And the law states I am not to walk away from that. I am obligated by the law of this country to report that matter. I'm also obligated by the Bible that that guy may need help. That guy who did it needs to be caught. So what are you going to do? Somebody's coming out of your of your house, of your broken window. They're coming out. They're carrying your TV set and your cell phone. And they're coming out in the middle of the night. And you see them. Oh, judge not least. You be judged. No, you be poking them with anything you can find. Get the cops and get your telephone and your television back. But you think... Judge not. If I say that to a preacher, if I say that to someone's witnessing for Jesus Christ, they're going to shut up and go home and never say anything again. Most likely, no, that's not going to happen. It won't be if you do find a new Christian who's doing something. It won't be to you if you offended that, that Christian in growth and he does stop. It won't be to you before God the Father and Jesus Christ the Son. But there's a fine line to judge. And I better be judged before I judge others. 1 Corinthians 5.12. 1 Corinthians 5.12. For what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within? What's the without and what's the within? The church. The body of Christ. I am not to judge those people who are not a Christian. Part of the church, part of the bride of Jesus Christ. They're lost. They're going to hell. The only thing I tell them is the gospel. Plain and simple. 
I don't tell you the cigarette out of your mouth. I don't tell you the, the, the can of beer you have in your mouth. I don't care what your dress looks like. That's not me judging you. Have you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved? No, you need to repent and you need to be saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's simple. People come up to me. Oh, what do you think about being gay? What do you think about, you know, uh, being this L, whatever this initials are for sodomy? He says, Stiley, how do you deal with that? I said, okay, let's get down to basic simple. Have you ever stolen anything? Have you ever told a lie? And I get to the commands, thou shalt not steal, Exodus 20, and thou shalt not bear false witness, Exodus 20. I'm not going to deal with this LB, whatever the, the initials are, because that's not everybody's sin. But I can deal with the plain, simple facts of three basic sins that we all do and have done. Either you lied, you stolen, or you did not honor your mother and father. Now, I can judge a person saved or lost on those right there and be saved. Sexual orientation, I don't know. Maybe you're trying to trick me up. You know, these people out there, God's going to condemn the sodomites. God's going to kill the queers and all that. Now you're judging wrong. Let's look at those people. Let's look at the Catholics. Let's look at the Jehovah Witnesses. Let's look at the guy loving the guy. Let's look at the guy shooting up dope. Let's look at the guy who's popping pills. Or let's look at, hey, you are a sinner. You've definitely stolen something. You've definitely told a lie. You have definitely not honored your mother and father. You've definitely not put God first in your life. And you may have, you may have taken the Lord's name in vain. OMG. Now, what about the people within? What about the Christians inside the church? I told you, and throughout my life, I had Christians come up to me properly and say, that's not what you're supposed to be doing. This is how it was to be done. And they've done it to help me to grow. They helped me, and I'm advanced by the Lord and by their help. Now, there are Christians who tear you down in the church. How dare you kick my gods? Get out of here. How dare you have those bumper stickers on that car? Can we move it? Oh, you're not going to do that ministry in my church name. You'd be happy somewhere else. That's wrong judgment. Judging inside the church of the body of Christ, those who are saved, is you're not doing something right. This is the scripture. This will help you grow. This will help you in the fellowship of God. And this will improve your Christian walk. Not tear down and not destroy. It's that simple. Deuteronomy 13. Deuteronomy 13, 13. Let's do it wrong. Deuteronomy 13.13. I got terrible handwriting. Deuteronomy 13.13. Certain men, the children of Belial, wicked, are going out from among you and have withdrawn the inhabitants of their city, saying, Let us go and serve other gods, which ye have not known. Let's go worship somebody besides God the Father. Let's bring in a worldly God and not Jesus Christ. Let's bring about a new witnessing. Let's bring in some new music. Thou shalt inquire and make search and ask diligently. And behold, if it be true and a thing certain that such abomination is wrought among you, and it goes to verse 15, thou shalt smite the inhabitants of land. That's Old Testament. But let's look at what we're looking at here now. Judging. Somebody has caused an offense. Here are the children of Israel. How about inside the church house? Somebody has caused an offense. What do you do? You inquire. I heard this Christian is doing something. No, no, no. Shut your mouth up. Inquire. 
search and ask diligently. What's this judging? You better get all the facts. What was Joe Friday's words he spoke often? Just the facts, ma'am. Not the gossip. So before we're going to look at a Christian and we're going to judge a Christian and we're going to open our big fat mouth to that Christian, we're going to make sure it's so. We're going to put some effort into it. And I had a few churches that have failed doing that. I had been judged by a church that I was a Paul only. They didn't ask, they didn't seek, they didn't make search, and they were wrong. And they're followed up to that. So we're going to judge. That the Bible says we can judge within. We better, what? Inquire. We better make search and ask. The, we better get to know the facts. And if we don't have the facts, we don't need that. We don't have the facts. Shut up. And don't judge. That ought to be done with much prayer. 1 Corinthians 2.15. I know these are out of order and I apologize. I try to get them in order, but this, this study is, this is how it has to be. 1 Corinthians 2.15. You see, when somebody comes up to you on the street, judge not me, they just want you to shut up. They're not even really listening. They just, they hear Bible, they hear Jesus, they hear hell. And they want you to get the hell out. And you want to get them out of hell. Now I said already, most of the time, I believe it. They just think you're going to run away. I have people come up to me all the time, like, man, take one look at me. I had a cop one time tell me I was frightening. <laughs> I'm not going to run that easy. But here's the verse in 1 Corinthians 2.15. But he that is spiritual, Bible living, Bible doing, Bible saved, Bible honoring, Bible studying, he that is spiritual judges all things. Yet he himself is judge of no man. So, going back to the Christian. I see someone at church, in between sir after services, and they're out there having a cigarette. <coughs> There's nothing seeking. There it is. I have to write the Bible say, you know, that's not pleasing God. It ought to stop. I'm not going to force them. I'm going to show them scriptures. I'm going to open up the Ezekiel show where they're imitating the devil by that smoking fire coming out of their mouth. I'm doing it because I want them to, to grow. I want them to get right. I am not doing it to say, look how great thou art. Look how great I am. I want to say how great thou art, God. Yet he, he himself is judge of no man. Now, again, wearing the shirts that were inappropriate for witnessing and having a public ministry that guy wasn't judging me he's looking at that shirt say that's wrong anybody who wear that shirt that that shirt ought not to be worn when you're it shouldn't be worn at all as a christian now that was either you know i was on fire for the lord or if i wasn't on fire for the lord i happened to be on fire for the lord May that's why what made him to do it. But the fact is, I see you doing something. I see. I see. I have inquired. I have the facts. I see you doing something that Christ does not enjoy his bride to be doing. Going to help you out. You can step in and judge the thing. Don't judge a person. They may not get right. They may get right. We can judge things. Now, without. Somebody comes up to me and they're arguing in my face. They hate me preaching the gospel. I'm preaching what I know. They hate the gospel. They hate the Bible. I am screaming too loud. I'm turning everybody away. And the whole world's going to just blow up because I'm there preaching the gospel. 
with that kind of attitude, I'm going to deal with you as lost and going to hell. And if you say, well, I'm saving, your conduct doesn't prove it. Okay? You proclaim to be saved. The Bible says go in all the world and preach the gospel. I do. I let my light shine. But Jesus preached to the multitude. He preached to the on the Sermon on the Mount, and all these people heard him. Well, you know, yeah, but I, I, you know, I don't do that. Our church don't do that. Okay, you proclaim to be saved. I can't say yes or no. I don't think you are, but that's not my judgment. Your attitude to the scriptures, your attitude to me explaining to you what the Bible says, and you rejecting it, I am just taking you out, whether you're saved or lost, you are a Bible rejecter, not a reader. And now whether you're saved or whether you're lost, you will not, man, you are angry with the scriptures. Now what am I going to judge? I'm backing off. And if you're going to argue with me, you can check out the video. When people argue with me, this is what I do. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes on him should not perish. Ooh, he that has the son has everlasting life. He that has not the son shall not see life. Now, this is where I've matured in my public ministry. If you're getting in my faith, and I don't know where we're going to go with this. I don't know if you're saved. I don't know if you're lost. I'll just start quoting scripture. To I'm not giving you the time, I'm not giving you effort no more, and you, you're just going to back away. Now, what have I done with judging? I have given you the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ if you're lost. I have given you scriptures if you're saved. Now, it's between you and God. It's that simple. Titus 3.2 But, again, judge not. When people come up, they just want you to shut up. Titus 3, 2. To speak evil of no man. To be no brawlers. Be gentle. Showing all meekness unto all men. Sometimes that's hard. Sometimes they will get you angry. I've fallen in that. I have gotten angry in the public ministry and I have sinned. And I have confessed it and put it under the blood, blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes not instantly, sometimes later. That's wrong. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. I'm still foolish. Disobedient. I'm still disobedient. Deceived. Thank God on that one. Serving diverse lusts and pleasures. Living in malice and envy. Hateful and hating one another. Thank God I don't have that no more. But after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior toward men appeared. Not by words of righteousness, which we have done. It's not what I have done. But according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of the regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. Which we shed on us, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. And being justified by his grace, we should be made hairs according to the hope of eternal life and christian you're going to judge that sinner oh and i hate them street preachers they got the wicked sign and they get in your face about your sin i hate them that's wrong I don't hate the people. I pray for them. But I mean, I hate the procedures they're doing. Because it's wrong. And they've forgotten that if they're saved, they've forgotten what the Lord has taken them out from. Listen, some of these things in this list, I've done. Some of these lists, I'm still doing. Some of these lists, I've gotten victory over. And when you're going to judge that person, you've forgotten who you were. Now, I, like I said, I hate that word. I don't mean, you know, hateful. We're not to hate as Christians. But I don't hate the people, remember? I hate the thing that they do. See, there's a difference.
I, you cannot, you know, if you say Stalin hates the people that do that, I, you're wrong. Now I hear something like that, I say, Lord God, help me. But what they're doing, I hate. I hate sin. I don't care who's doing it. And who's ever doing it, I am praying for them and trying to help them to do right. See, we love the people, but we hate the sin. And that's where they got, you know, God loves, God hates the sin and loves the sinner. That's not true. But how about for Christians? I hate sin, but I hate what sin does to people. I hate the consequences of sin in people, but I love the people. My son is in jail for many years because of a sin. I hate that sin he done, but I love him. I've dealt many years in prison ministry, and I won't even tell you the people I've met. No, it's not the people. I will tell you the crimes that they committed, all kinds, and they're deceitful, they're wicked, they're vile crimes, but the people I have witnessed to, and some have gotten saved, I've got them out of the wrong Bible into the King James Bible, I've been able to deal with them and help them through troubles and problems, I've been able to be a light to help them grow in the Lord, and some, nothing as far as I know. But if a murderer comes up to me, I can't look at you're a murderer. I gotta look at are you saved or are you lost? You're lost, you need the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you saved? Well, let's grow. Come, let's grow. What about what I was? Who cares? There have been women out there, I'm sure, who've been wicked, vile prostitutes. And they've gotten saved and they've turned into a wonderful wife, wonderful mother. And a wonderful woman in the church that they belong in. I guarantee. And there'll be someone who comes along. Hey, she was a prostitute. Yeah. That's the thing. But now look at the woman. But you look at the woman and the sin. Judge the thing. How do you judge the thing? All right. Here's a woman. She's been a prostitute. She's been vile in her life. She got saved. Is not that sin under the blood? Yes. Yeah. Does not the Bible say he's able and just to forgive us our sin? Yes. So why are you remembering the sin of someone who's saved, but God doesn't remember? And that person may be troubled and problem over that sin that God has forgiven, just can't get that victory over the vile and wickedness, whatever sin it is. And you're going to have the nerve to bring it up in their family. You're going to bring it up in their family and bring it up to them again. How dare you? Let's play the movie protector of your sins and what you've done. See how you like it. Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4.29. You know, how about it? How about if you're going to judge? What if, what if God brought up your stuff? What if God opened up your closet door before all? Let no corrupt communication, 429, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to use for edifying, and that it may minister grace unto the hearers. What's the judgment here? What are you talking about? I've got to use my mouth right. There have been many times that I wanted to open up my mouth and it would have been bad, it would have had bad consequences, it would have done a lot more damage. Open up my mouth, it would have been a volcano, it would have been a tornado, it would have been a hurricane, but keeping it shut. That's judging. That's judging yourself. And keeping your mouth shut when it should not be open is judging and we ought to be grace and we ought to be edifying and if we don't judge our mouth we don't judge those words that are coming out of our mouth we'll be totally opposite from edifying totally opposite from grace and we'll do more harm than good sticks and stones may break my bones but names will never hurt, hurt me that's a lie because you can call someone names and it'll hurt them 
Verbal abuse is far worse than physical abuse. Some verbal abuse has stayed with the person a lifetime, where some physical abuse can, you know, heal up. Now, I'm not saying physical abuse is not lifetime. I'm not saying that. But abuse that, you know, is temporal, verbal abuse can go for a long time. So we got to judge our mouth, Christians. Do I need to say it? 1 Timothy 2.7 Where do I am ordained a preacher? An apostle, I speak the truth in Christ and lie not. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. Fact. A fact. Is what you're going to say be the truth? Or I heard it yesterday. A Baptist tale, a Baptist story. No, it's not a Baptist tale. It's not a Baptist story. It's a outright lie. And it ought not to be coming out of our mouth. Can we judge these mouths to speak the truth? Is not God, the, God is not able, cannot, and will never tell us a lie. How is your mouth, Christian? Now, we've turned this study now from a person coming up, judge not. But how are we doing, Christians? How truthful are the lips and the tongue that we speak? Have you control of judging to stop that lie from coming out? Well, if you can't control that lie, and you can't control the fibbing and the white lies and the Baptist story, then you have no business going out and judging others. Judgment begins home, at home, you, with you. Jesus. Ephesians 4.25. I guarantee you, just by the, the title of this one, it's not going to get, many people are not going to. But Ephesians 4.25. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man true, with his neighbor, doesn't say save it us, for we are members of one another, that's Christians. If you tell a lie, you are not judging your mouth. You are not judging your conduct. You are not judging for everyone to hear that lie as Christians being faithful. There are people out there who know Christians who are liars and they have given a phony, foul name of Christian and will not listen to Christians because you, the Christian, won't judge your conduct. Verse 15. But speaking the truth in love may grow up unto him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. You know the biggest problem Christians have that James speaks about? We got this flapping tongue that won't shut up. Some people have a problem with judging the lips being open and the tongue flapping. And then they use that to judge others. While themselves, remember Matthew 7, 1 and Luke 6, 37, God is going to judge them for that flapping tongue and that open mouth that should not be. So Christians, when we go about judging others of their sins and them, how's your mouth? And do you know, listen, do you know, if you are to judge that person, let, let's say you go out there, saved or lost person, let's say you judge them and you are completely wrong on your judging. You've just lied. You just lied about that person. That's called slander. You lied. Because you didn't seek, you didn't inquire, you didn't, deal with it, you didn't ask Dylan to win. Sorry, I have a problem with that word. First Thessalonians 4.1. 1 Thessalonians 4.1. Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk, 
and to please God, he would abound more and more. The Bible is your standard. The Bible is your judge. You find out by studying to show thyself approved under God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, but rightly divine the word of truth. You find out what the Bible says about how a Christian is supposed to walk, and you walk accordingly. You seek the Bible. You ask God, and you inquire of the scriptures, and then you do what God wants you to do. And of all the things that God wants us to do, judgment is not number one. But remember Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 2.15? We judge things and not us. 1 Thessalonians 5.14. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly. Comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. That's judging. In your church, or you, as someone as your job, or your family, they're saved, they're Christians, they, they love the Lord, they're down, they're, they're, they're having problems, they're just weak. You search, inquire, ask, and help. I mean, you got, listen, you got a Christian, he's happy, joy, 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 and singing praises to God. He just, that guy does not need no help. Matter of fact, I should go to him and have him help me. See, now we judge emotions. That person is down. That person, they don't look so happy. They're, let me go find out if there's something I can, I'm not going to butt in, but is there anything I can do? Can I be a help? Can I be an encouragement? Man, that person's just glad and happy. Praise the Lord. How's that for judging? How's that for a help? 2 Thessalonians 3.12 Now them that are such we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. 3.12 Look at verse, I mean, verse 11, and we hear that there are some which walk among the disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. Paul says, I've heard something about Christians. I don't know. Now, they there are such, if it is true. Oh, I don't know. This is what I heard. But if it is true, this is what you do. Paul has left the option in verse 12. Don't go after them. But if it's true, then this is what you do. Paul's leaving the chance is, maybe what I heard is not correct. See, he's unable to search. He's unable to inquire. He's unable to ask. The only, so if there is a problem, there seems to be a problem. Those, if that be the problem, then you take care of. That's proper judgment. 1 Timothy 2.1. 1 Timothy 2.1 Exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men. What's the first standard if you're going to judge? Prayer. Well, I'm going to go judge them. Pray again. I'm going to judge them. Pray before you judge. I'm going to go judge them. Pray again. I'm going to go talk to them. Judge, pray while you're judging. Pray, 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 pray. Search the scriptures. Inquire the scriptures. Ask diligently of the scriptures. That are you able by God to go and judge? And pray some more. It may not be any of your business. It's that simple. 2 Timothy 4.2 Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, reprove, exhort with all love, suffering, and doctrine. So here's it. I'm preaching on the street. I'm preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody comes up, judge not, least you be judged. Keep it in the church house, in season, out of season. I'm doing what the Bible tells me to do. It is out of season to be outside in an environment where there are people. Some are saved, some are not saved, like a church. It's not set up for a man to step up with the Bible and preach the word. That's out of season. 
and I am to reprove, rebuke. I am to tell them unless they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, they're going to hell. And this is the benefits if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't go to hell. You go to glory. You got a brand new body. You be absent from the body, present with the Lord. I give them both sides. And for the Christian, when they look at you, it's like, wow, what are they doing? That's interesting. Uh, is that what we're supposed to be doing? And then you got the other one. Yeah, that my like sign. Ain't you shut up? You're giving a bad name. Right then. I guess you never read 2 Timothy 4 2. Titus 1 9. Titus 1 9. Holy fast the faithful word as he being taught that he may be able to able by sound doctrine both to exhort, exhort, tell, and to convince the gainslayers. You got gainslayers in the church, Titus. Judge them, judge the gainslayers, and exhort them. It is the pastor's job of a church to judge and to exhort. That's his job. If there's a sin in the church, it's his job to deal with it. Plain and simple. It better be the sin. It better not be the opinions. It better not be. It better not be because you want to serve the world. That's Hebrews three thirteen. But exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through deceitfulness of sin. It is our job. Like I said, people came up to me growing in the Lord. That's not what you're supposed to be doing. The wrong attitude I could have taken, I probably have in cases, who do you think you are? And then the proper attitude is, oh, what am I supposed to do? And I don't mean it as an attitude. I mean, what do I do? How do I do it? That person has looked at me, has seen something I was doing, and he, most cases, they have a well-being for you. So in the glory of God, they come to me and they, they take care of it. I had a guy one time, he came up and told me he was going to steal something of mine. And I went to the Bible said, I went to him personally. Are you going to be like that? That's the wrong attitude. That's the wrong attitude. Mark 16, 15. Mark 16, 15. And he said unto them, Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Again, we're getting back to you're, you've got a public ministry. Judge not least you be judged. Are you a Bi uh, are you a Christian? Yeah, I'm a Christian. You're not a Bible reader. Well, I read my Bible. You don't read all of it. Oh, I read. You don't study it. Because the Bible says, study and show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not rightly, uh, not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You would just made yourself ashamed because you don't rightly divide. It don't say let your shine, light shine. It says let the gospel be preached. You do it out of context. Acts 16.42. Acts 16.42. And there is 16, no 1642. Acts 1042, excuse me. Acts 1042. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge, capital J, of the quick and dead. You know why I go in all the world and preach the gospel? Because you're going to face the judge one day. And without the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to face the judge. Prepare to meet that God. You will face God without Jesus Christ at the great white throne judgment. And he will find you guilty. And if your name is not written in the land's book of life, you will be cast off in the lake of hell, lake of fire forever. God says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. Why? That you appear not before the judge. That will find you condemned. That will say to you, depart from me, workers of iniquity. I never knew you. 
I'm the one with love. Because I don't want you to see you go to hell. First Corinthians 15.1. Now we're getting to the public ministry. When they do come up to you, judge not. Moral brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you. See? It's preach. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. Tell them about a loving God that died for their sins. And if they don't believe in that loving God, they do not believe on the merits of Jesus Christ alone. Without religion, without works, without anything but the, the blood of Jesus Christ as their way to get into heaven, they are going to hell. Don't judge me. I'm not. God is. God just has me giving you the message. It's that simple. Romans said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him dead. And then it goes on to say, Well, how should they do it except they have a preacher? How shall they know since it be sent? It is God sending the man to bring to you to preach to you the gospel that saves. We're not judging. We are telling you God has set forth a standard. It is Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. If you don't do that, you're going to hell. That's God already doing the judging. John chapter 3 says, you're condemned already. We're trying to get you uncondemned by you to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Now, Matthew 7. Matthew 7. And know this in the back of your mind, Matthew 7. Be ready to open it to him. Matt, the biggest question, judge not. Hand them your Bible and say, okay, find it for me. 99.9 .9 times, they're not going to be able to find Matthew without the index. So open your Bible to them say, Matthew 7, 1. Judge not that ye be not judged. Well, see, you're going to be judged. I've already judged myself. I've already put my sins under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I've already sought God. And I've asked God to help me preach to you. I've asked God to help me give the voice and give me the gospel and the way to present to the people the Lord Jesus Christ. I've already been judged. Now, an hour from now, I, I don't know. But right now, I've asked God to, to wash me in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're coming up and saying, judge not. You're judging me. For what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. You're telling me to shut up. How come you haven't shut up? You don't want me to speak anymore. What came up and gave you to tell me to be quiet? Remember we looked at, remember we went to the verses about judging our mouths? For this purpose. That person that comes up to you says, judge not. They did not judge your mouth to say, I ought not to be saying that. How's that? Does not, do we not read the Bible, go in all the world and preach the gospel, right? Go and preach the gospel that you have received, right? We, we've learned that. So we are doing what God has told you. Go out and preach the gospel. That person comes up, judge not, that wants you to shut up. They are going against the Bible. And the proper thing for them to do Going against God and going against the Word of God is for them not to say anything at all. And that's what we went through for the Christian. We're to keep our mouths quiet when we're not to say anything. And that coming up to you, judge not. That's not what the Bible says. Lady, sir, according to the Bible that you respectfully don't know and quote from, the Bible says, Matthew 7, if you need to be quiet, you're the first one to be quiet because I am doing what God told me to do. Now, you be quiet and let me do what God told me to do. Now, you're not going to get no favor. You're not going to get no loving heart. You're not going to get a hug. You're not going to get a handshake. You're going to get someone griping and complaining. But the fact is, by them opening up trying to tell you to stop preaching the gospel that God has taught you, for what judgment ye judge, be quiet. I don't want to hear it. Ye shall be judged. God's going to judge them as opening up their big mouth and be at fault. Unless they repent and get right themselves. And with what me measure ye meet, it shall be measured unto you. 
you want him to shut up you don't want him to preach the gospel you don't want him to to talk about jesus christ you don't want him to have a bible Well, we don't want to hear from you. We don't want to hear your ways. We don't want to hear your worldly ways. We don't want to hear of your whatever you have. But God the Father, God Almighty, God the Creator, God the Savior, Jesus Christ said, preach the gospel. And the Bible says in Matthew, Bible says in Matthew, every idle word, and a man shall speak. Matthew 12, 36. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. Ma'am, you need to get right with God. I am doing what the Bible that you profess to know. I am doing what the Bible tells me. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. God does not want you to tell me not to preach the gospel. Now you're going to be judged by God. By you judging me to be quiet. And when a man goes forth with the gospel, preaching the gospel for, for the sake of Jesus Christ and the lost man, that's what God wants. Judge not. They just added more sins upon sins by saying that. 